Hello everyone and good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us for this afternoon session on the Key to Tone, which is supported by L'Oreal Professionnel Paris. We're joined by the lovely Grace Del Gleish, who is the Education Director at Brooks and Brooks Hair and L'Oreal Professionnel Paris guest artist. And she's going to be sharing her expert hints and tips and tricks for how to per personalize your balayage this afternoon. She'll be showing you how to find your own fingerprint with balayage using different glosses. And it'll be looking at how to move your balayage services forward and how to stay relevant with your clients. As I said before, this session is supported by L'Oreal Professional Paris. So for more information about how you can use L'Oreal Professional Paris's French balayage technique, blonde studio range and toners to personalise your client's balayage, you can go to l'orealprofessionnel.co.uk forward slash French dash balayage dash blonde dash studio and before I introduce you to Grace I'm sure you can see on the screen if you go to hairdressers journal dot online after this session and register for free there will be one-to-one -one speed networking at 3 p.m today where you can chat to members of the industry including Grace and you simply go to the networking tab and click start networking um, so that's that's all, everything I needed to say there Grace so thank you so much for joining us this afternoon Hi, thank you, Laura, and thank you, HJ, for having me. I'm so excited to share with you guys today, you know, all my balayage tips and tricks and hacks. Um, my name's Grace, and I am a L'Oreal professional guest artist, and I am an educator for Brooks and Brooks and the education director. Um, so, you know, during this lockdown, we have been doing so much online education. It's been keeping us super busy, keeping us inspired and motivated. And today's session, I just really wanted to share with you guys my balayage kind of hacks, how balayage is kind of evolving and moving forward and how we can kind of put our fingerprint um, on the balayage. So really talking about personalizing bespoke toners, and using really nice express quick applications using the new Blonde Studio Clay Lightener by L'Oreal. So this exciting. is a brand new product and I'm so excited about it. It's a clay lightener, so it has seven levels of lift and the consistency is incredible. Um, and that's something that I think is really, really important with balayage is finding a consistency that works for you and um, really going into depth with your mixing, finding a formula that works. So what I love about this lightning product is it's quite stretchy. So it is like a clay. So what it does is when you apply it to the hair, it really glides onto the surface of the hair. So it's really amazing to create really seamless blends. Um, and it kind of gives you that safety net, I find, um, with kind of balayage applications. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to share with you guys um, my first mannequin. Um, half of it's been done for you guys today. And I'm just going to show you how I got there using the new L'Oreal Professional Clay Lightener. So I'm just going to grab those up for you. We've got Lydia and Lydia too with us today, haven't we, Grace? Ah, this is the OG Lydia. <laughs> and so what we've done today is we've literally we've lightened it using the new clay lightener. Um, you know, balayage for me is such a huge umbrella, and there's so many directions we can move in. You know, I feel like balayage now isn't a service, um, isn't a trend, it's a service, sorry. And there's so many techniques, there's so many routes we can go down to create so many results and looks. So what I've done today is using the new clay lightener, I've lightened a lot, all the tips of the hair. We've gone for a real heavy, kind of full Monty paint um, using a palm painting technique. Um, and then I'm gonna come back to this in a bit and just touch on the toners and how we've applied the toners um, and how toners are kind of moving forward within balayage. So I just want to bring Vivian number two out and I'm going to get straight into my demo on how I achieved that kind of heavy full Monty balayage paint. First things first is consistency guys. It's really, really important. And with this clay lightener, I've mixed it one to two. I don't know if you guys can see that very well because of the lighting, but it's a real like, um, kind of like icing the texture it's like cake frosting <laughs> quite thick 
Um, but don't don't eat it. <laughs> definitely do not try that at home. It, look, it looks edible, to be fair. Oh, brilliant. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start working away with just a, a real simple application. And it's something I do a lot in the salon um, because it's nice and quick, it's impactful, um, and it's just really beautiful if you're looking for a lot of lift um, and a lot of impact. Yes, this product is just seven levels, but don't be afraid, guys. The consistency of for your freehand applications is really amazing. And if blending is something you struggle with, or it's something that you find when you're mixing, maybe it's a little bit too watery and you end up getting a few dotty areas, this consistency really does have your back. Mixing it one to two and just really creating that kind of frosting paste so that it's gonna glide onto the hair surface. So what I'm going to do is just get straight into this little demonstration and we're working on a horizontal and we're taking quite large sections working through. Just while you're doing that Grace, do you have any hints and tips for how to stay relevant with balayage because obviously it's been around for quite a while now hasn't it? Balayage is one of the most exciting things I think in colour at the moment constantly evolving and it's changing and I think staying relevant with balayage is always offering your client change and educating your client on what actually balayage is because a lot of clients just think it's you know lightning through the lengths and ends balayage can be to the roots it can be through the mid length it can be used to create dimension to create texture but for me how we stay relevant with balayage is the gloss it's all about the finishing, kind of putting your fingerprint on that. So when we say, you know, it's all about the gloss, it really is about personalizing your balayage. So originally we talk about toners as a backwash service, where now toners aren't for the backwash. It's not just a global application. Our clients are wanting to see more dimension. They know more than ever because of social media, and um, what reflex shade they even want, you know, whether they want it cool, whether they want it warm, whether that's going to suit them or not, they kind of know what they want before they even sit in our chair. So I think offering a complete new service of toning, you know, at the section, using two to three shades, really creating different textures and dimensions in the hair is going to elevate your balayage to that next level. So just going into technique guys, I'm just using a little bit of water spray and that is literally just where I want my melt to be. So just working below the roots on that mid band area, keeping the ends nice and dry. And I'm gonna go in with my clay lightener. And this is what I call a palm painting technique. And we're gonna work that product all the way through the mid lengths and ends, so we get lots of saturation, which is going to give us plenty of lightness within the seven levels. I'm not using a balayage board because I just find that when I use my hands, I'm really pushing that foot through, so it's going to give me a little bit more lift. Now, this product here, it's ammonia free, which is obviously amazing for our clients and the condition, and it also doesn't have any odor. So you know when we work a lot with like bleaches and pre-lightness products, they, they kind of smell quite chemical. This actually smells, I think it smells quite sweet, but they claim that it's no odour, which is really, really like quite a nice, lovely kind of additive for your clients. So what yeah. I'm, I'm just using my four hands and I'm just working up. So I'm removing the product through to the root area. So I've got less product into heavy products and I'm just going to lift that up and blend through the mid lengths and ends. Now with this product you can use oil so I'm doing an enclosed technique for you guys today so this is obviously going to just retain the heat and it's just going to help with lift as well but you can see how easy that consistency is to work with and I'm just using my foils on the ends because that is the tip of the hair. That's where I want the heaviest saturation. It's where I want the lightest part of the hair to be. And I still want to work with that gradient. Do 
you have any tips, Grace, for the freehand technique application? Yeah, so freehand technique, the core thing for your freehand is getting your core foundation. So it's really working on your blend. And I think your blend is, you know, the trickiest bit. Once you master your blend, then you've, and you've got that kind of fundamental under your belt, then for me, balayage is different on every single client because every paint's different, every client's unique. So I think for a freehand technique, what you want to do is you want to have control of the hair. You want to take your time. You want to find that consistency that works for you. So really delve into your product choice, trying the clay lightener, trying the, it, I think it mixes one to one and a half, one to two and one to three. So play around with the consistency and work by slowing down first. Slowing down first, getting loads of tension into the hair. Tension is key with freehand, especially with this technique I'm showing you guys today. I've got a lot of tension on the hair, so I've got complete control when I'm moving that product up. Are you, do you prefer to do the freehand technique when creating a balayage look, Grace? I, do you know what? I love freehand painting. One, because it's quite visual. Um, and I really love visual colouring. Like, I really like to get into my rhythm and I like to kind of create quite bespoke kind of placements within to my clients. But I do believe that, like, trend-wise, balayage is going to be more combination techniques as well. So using the foil... Um, like a baby light or highlights within like a freehand technique together. So you're creating different textures within your hair and different placements. How do you think balayage is evolving, Grace? And how do you think it will evolve in the coming months? I think balayage is constantly evolving, especially with like these new technologies and these products now, you know, these clay lighteners which give us so much more control over the hair. It's an easier application. It's, constant, it's constantly gonna be evolving, but I think how we evolve balayage is, is to kind of keep offering our clients change. So, you know, working with our glosses and working with like creating kind of services within the balayage umbrella to keep pushing it forward because I know like a lot of my clients, especially after lockdown, a lot of my balayage clients, their hair will have grown out nicely. You know, balayage is all about creating seamless blends and pops of color, but that's not what we want as hairdressers. You know, we want to make sure our clients are coming back. And it's really important that we don't mistake um, balayage for being a low maintenance coloring service, because that way, you know, that's going to affect one, our clients coming back to see us, which means, you know, they're not seeing us more frequently, they're not coming back, you know, that then affects, you know, your wages, I guess, because they're not coming back as like a highlight client every six weeks or every four to six weeks. So the way we move balayage forward and the way balayage is moving forward is getting your clients back in for those top up services. So if I'm doing like a full month of paint now, if I was to do this on the full head, she's going to have loads of lightness. Six months time, yes, she's going to have a heavy root, but she's still going to have loads of lightness. So the way we get her back is in six weeks time or him back. In six weeks time, we then opt for a gloss service. So we're putting that reflex shade back in, whether it's a trend driven shade, whether it's cooling it down, whether it's warming it up. And then six weeks later, we get our balayage clients in for maybe some baby lights through the top. So that's when we could get our combination techniques flowing. So it's kind of like alternating the balayage service each time. But there are so many techniques with balayage today. This is just one technique. This is one of my favorite kind of go-tos because it's so quick and express and you can have maximum impact um, with your placement and your light, lightness. Brilliant. I'm just going to answer and um, ask a question that we've had from Mel. Do you prefer foils on balayage as opposed to cling film or does it depend on the hair type? And also what, um, what percentage peroxide do you generally use for a balayage? Really good question. So balayage, um, 
in cling film or foil, both are really great. Cling film is amazing because obviously you can see through it. So you can actually see how your colours progress in um, and how much it's lifting. Obviously cling film as well will retain heat. It's just a bit faffy sometimes. Like I like to use cling film if I've got an assistant um, and she can help me, you know, get the pieces out. Otherwise I end up being like a mummy and I'm, wrap I'm wrapped around all this cling film and it gets <laughs> I can be quite a messy colorist as well. I hold my hands up. I kind of get in my zone and I like to kind of paint away. So clean film definitely has a purpose and it's amazing. Um, but I find with foil, I, it holds a bit more um, heat retention. And I find I just work a little bit more neater with foil. Um, I get a great lift with it. And I also have the option to go back in and reapply if I want to. Um, so it's quite nice to have the two options, but something as a colorist, which I think is quite nice, and as a hairdresser, is to switch up your tools all the time. So not getting stuck on just using your foils or just using your cling film or your cotton wool. It's quite nice to mix it up a little bit because it keeps your kind of day a bit more funner, mixes it up, and it kind of gets you out of your comfort zone a little bit. What yeah. was the other question? Um, the other the other question was what percent peroxide would you normally use that's a great one so peroxide is key um with an open air technique so if i was to use the blonde studio play lightener which is what i'm using now it's seven levels of lift if i was working on a darker bases from six and below and my client wanted um lift i would maybe go for an open air technique using 40 volume if the hair was virgin in great condition. Um, and that way I would let the hair slowly develop and lift up. Um, but I generally, with foils, anything from 20 volume to 30 volume, I'd never put 40 volume in a foil. It's too much heat, it's too much um, pre-lightener, it's gonna compromise the condition. That's not what we want when coloring the hair. We wanna keep the hair in maximum condition. So Oxidan today, um, you know, Lydia, she's a little bit stubborn. She's a mannequin. I can't <laughs> get my hands back on humans. Um, I'm doing 30 volumes, so I'm just giving it that extra little push. But you can see on the other mannequin how, um, how nicely it lifted. And it's, you know, it's only seven levels of lift, this product. It's still a great amount of lift. But I guess with your seven levels, you've got a bit more control with the lift. Um, so I'd be more than happy to do this in an open air technique. If I was looking for maybe like two to three levels of lift, um, I'd definitely go. So say I've got a, a client in dark hair, base six and below, she maybe wants to just go two shades lighter to more of a caramel shade. So we're talking more like your blonde client, not necessarily your blonde client. That would be all open air technique using either 30 volume, um, or 40 volume. Amazing, Grace, thank you. We've had um, another question as well. Um, earlier on, before you started applying um, the um, Blonde, L'Oreal Blonde Studio, you were using a water spray. I was, yes. Um, what, um, could you explain the reason behind spritzing the hair with the water spray? So the water spray is gonna help, when you're palm painting, you're applying lots of products and um, it's quite a heavy saturation of colour. So where you um, apply your water is where you want your gradient of colour. So when we think of balayage, we think of a seamless blend, a seamless transition of colour. So where we apply, where we want our blend, that's where we spray. So of course that's gonna oxidise the colour and diffuse the level of lift we're gonna get essentially. So it's gonna lift slightly warmer and then the ends, you'll get more lift. So your ends are gonna get more lift, lift. your mid band's gonna get slightly um, less, like maybe one to two shades less. So it's just, it's just a great little tool to use if it's something maybe like you're maybe not so confident with, or you know, you, you're a little bit more kind of smaller sections and slower and steadier. You know, if you're not used to taking these big sections of hair, it's a great kind of safety blanket for blending and it's it's just a great go-to. It's nice and quick and uh, the results are really, really beautiful. 
Amazing. And um, do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about your go-to products, Grace, for creating the ultimate balayage look? So go-to products um, in terms of balayage, obviously your pre-lightener is really important and this new clay lightener with L'Oreal um, I think is available right now. So as soon as we get to this, back to the salons, um, which for us in the UK is on Monday, which is so exciting, um, I definitely will be using this product on a lot of my balayage clients. Um, but in terms of products, I think your lightning is very important when it comes to balayage, but your toning is as equally as important. So now when I tone, it's more two to three shades rather than one global shade. And especially with the palm painting technique that I've just demonstrated for you, which is this end result. You can see the blend is really soft and seamless, yet it's quite a heavy transition. So what I've done is I've done like a zone tone um, technique, which is blending like a darker shade into a lighter shade and then mixing it up a little bit. So yes, your lightning is obviously your go-to product for your placement and you know, where you want to see your pops and, and uh, contrasting against maybe the natural depths in the hair, but your toning is what's going to keep it looking like fashion forward and making your client feel relevant and it's going to um, keep kind of moving forward trend-wise with balayage. Brilliant. We've had a question as well, Grace, about um, using Smart Bond and do you add that to the mixer? Yes, yeah, Smart Bond is an incredible bonding agent, um, which is great to add with your lighting products. I would never not colour with um, a bonding agent now. It's something that um, is just like, it's a go-to um, because obviously it's going to strengthen the hair, it's going to protect the hair when you're lifting. It's not going to interfere either with the levels of lift. Um, and I think that's really important. Sometimes we, we are a bit afraid of using bonding agencies, especially if we've got a client that wants a lot of lift and she wants it nice and cool. Um, don't be afraid to add your bonding agent. You need your bonding agent, especially with doing something like this. Like this is quite a creative application in terms of how much level of lightness we've got going on here. Um, so if I was to not use my bonding agent, I'd probably get in a bit of trouble. And obviously I would never want to compromise the condition. No, completely. Just gonna move on now and just talk you through the toning technique behind this. So usually with toning, um, I would do wet, especially when working with uh, like a blending technique. So the reason we wet down the hair is to diffuse the colour. And um, so if you think if you apply paint onto, you know, like a white piece of paper or a canvas, it's, it's going to be quite vivid, it's going to be quite pigmented, it's going to be quite bright. If we water that down, it's obviously going to be a little bit more diffuse and a bit softer. So that is my reason for you working on wet hair. I just find, again, it's that safety blanket with your blending. And um, of course, it does dilute the toner. So if you are looking for a lot of neutralization, you probably want to stay clear of using your clear products. So I'm going to be toning with Dialyte, um, a great range for toning with in L'Oreal. And it um, has a lot of clear that you can kind of add into your tones to kind of neutralize and soften it a little bit so it doesn't feel too overtoned, especially if you're getting creative with your toners. Clear is a great kind of diffuser. Um, but if you're looking for lots of neutralization, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And maybe I could go and opt to apply on dry hair. But of course, your blending needs to be on top, top form because the hair's drier. And um, so it's a slightly different texture to work with. Brilliant. Could you tell us a little bit about the new L'Oreal Professional Paris French Balayage technique and why the toning aspect is so important for that? Yeah, of course. So a French um, balayage technique is essentially, you know, it's the ultimate expensive looking balayage. It's luminous, it's chic, it's super, super shiny. And it almost has that kind of lip gloss finish. Um, so what a French balayage essentially is, is using multiple shades of colour. So using two to three shades. And it's just really offering your client something a bit different. 
and a bit more bespoke. So it's kind of what I'm going to be demonstrating now with you guys is just literally, this is something I would do at the, the chair. So this would be a whole service in itself, which means it's an extra charge on top of your bill. It's really important that you charge for your time. Um, and it's not, this isn't necessarily going, oh, I'm just gonna add on, a, add on an extra service to my client for, for an extra bit of money. It's, it's not about that at all. This is about your clients wanting to be cooler. They want to be, you know, they want a certain tone in their hair. They're showing you that Instagram photo and it's, it's warm, it's cool. It's got levels of negative space, light space. It's got a lot going on. And that needs to be done with a toner. Like the toner really, really, really is as important. So what I'm going in with now is I'm working with quite a neutral palette. And that's something I feel like with blondes, especially trend wise, is something that's gonna be huge for this summer. So neutral palette is essentially cool and warm tones together. So it's not super flat and ash. It's not super warm and golden. It's something in between. So it's quite sparkly and it's quite pretty. So it's a really great way to offer your blonde clients a bit of change and um, without having to commit to going to, um, to kind of fashion Tony, if that makes sense. So I'm working with a Dia Light 8 to 1. In fact, what I'm gonna do first is something I always like to do is leave the hairline out. That's what we call like the money piece. It's that moment piece. It's the lightest piece your client sees um, when she dries her hair. So if we tone that first, it's probably going to grab because of porosity levels. So you want to go to that last to keep the brightness. So I'm going in with Dia Light 821. So the natural root here is on a six level, um, in between the six and the seven level. So what I'm doing is I'm going in with an 821, so it's slightly going to drop it. So what I want to do is you can see here, it's quite light. And especially here, it's quite, it's quite blocky. So working with an 821 is essentially going to add my negative space in. And that's something that we talk about a lot when we lighten is our subdividing, we're lightening this area, we're leaving the negative space out so the light pops against the dark. Whereas this time in the toning, I'm using that balayage technique, but with my gloss. So it's a whole different kind of thought process when toning. Now I'm gonna to go to my second shade, which is Majorelle Glow, and it's 0.12 and 0.21. So you've got your mauve and your ash. So your mauve is your violet, your slightly softer, more pearlescent. So it's essentially warmer, a warmer core, cool. and then obviously your ash is your blue base, so it's, it's flat. So mixing the two together is just a really kind of pretty combination. And I'm essentially just really simply alternating the two tones through, working up. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me different layers, different textures within the hair, and give me more dimension. Oh, brilliant, Grace. And we've had a great question as well. Do you normally plan what toner you're going to use before you start the light lightning process or does it depend on how it's lifted? I would never overcompromise with my client. I, I love to kind of not overpromise, and I'd always maybe discuss taking our clients on a bit of a colour journey. Um, so I wouldn't be set on the toner. Um, I'd maybe be set on the reflex shade a little bit, if, of course, if your client wants really ash gray hair and it's, you know, you just know you're not going to get there, I would never agree to that. I'd maybe be tempted to darken her down and be really cool and then her next appointment line her up a bit more, keep her ashy but slowly lighten it to get that reflex shade. Because sometimes we can't achieve um, that reflex shade in one sitting, it's just impossible. Um, but I do like a challenge as a colorist. I do like to kind of be like, okay, you know, challenge myself, let's kind of do this, but I'd never want to compromise the condition. Um, so I'd never be too set on the reflex shade or in fact, on the toner, on the set toner, I'd maybe give options along the way. So this could be a possibility um, and maybe work out a few things along the way. And um, I always kind of say to my clients is, you know, some, some clients are really, you know, they know what they want or they think they know what they want. But I 
think what's really important to remember is, you know, our clients come to see us because they also want our equity opinion. So, you know, if they are showing us a picture of maybe it's Billie Eilish's new blonde or, you know, whoever the hot celeb is at the moment, it's important that we advise on suitability, fade factor, how actually is it going to, you know, last in the hair? Because, of course, I'm talking lots about toning now and putting your fingerprint on the finished result. But you need to factor in how long that tone is going to last. But what that does is it keeps your client coming back. Fantastic. Do you need to be concerned in terms of skin testing with toners, Grace? Somebody's asked us that. Yes, 100%. Yeah, skin tone. Um, skin tone? Skin tone <laughs> um, is, you know, it's a must. You've got to, you've got to do that every, uh, um, whatever your protocol is within your colour house. Yeah, definitely. With the Dial Light product, what I love a lot about it is it actually doesn't interfere with the natural colour. And um, so it's literally, say for example, this was her natural brunette at the root. This is all your pre light and end with the new Salon Studio 7 Levels Clay Lightener. If I was using a Dial Light gloss over the top, it's not going to bump her natural base. So it's only going to gloss the light and ends. So it's a really nice, um, nice toner to work with. If you're wanting something a little bit more heavier, then you've got your Dio Richesse range, um, which is going to give you a little bit more substance and a little bit more of a kind of heavier neutralization. Fantastic. We have, and um, we've also been asked, um, Grace, are you alternating the formulas on the sections that you're tinting right. at the moment? I'm just working completely up horizontal. If you wanted, you could go vertically and that way you're gonna get a different layer of color working through. But because we're alternating to get up, we're still gonna get quite a lot of nice softness. And with the Majorelle Glow shade, so that's just pure reflect. So that's your 0.12 and your 0.21. It's got no base in it. So all it's gonna do is put pure tone in. So then with my other shade, the 821, that's obviously got your eight level in, it's got your depth, it's gonna give you that kind of dimension running through. So it's quite nice um, to work. Majorelle Glow as well is a permanent range. So it's, um, it's gonna, it's great if your clients throw off a lot of warmth and they hate the warmth and they love the purple shampoo and they're always moaning about their hair being yellow. It's a great product. To really flatten out and cool those tones. So just mm -hmm. coming up to my last section, which is that lovely little money piece. I'm going to go in with my lightest shade, which is essentially my reflex shade of my, my Joelle Glow product. And I'm literally just going to leave that hairline last. So what's really important with toning, and I think it's something maybe we shy away from a little bit, is we get scared of overtoning the hair. And I think sometimes we apply toners onto the hair and then we panic because it maybe takes really quickly and we rinse it off, we dry it and the tone's gone. I would always, always say, leave that tone on for at least five minutes. It's not gonna do anything. You need to leave it on for five minutes, walk away um, and then come back and re reevaluate. We've just, you've, like you've read someone's mind there, Grace. Philippa asked, how long do you recommend to develop um, with toners? But that's a great, great answer you've just given there already. It's really, really visual. And it, again, like when you're creating that, that, what I call that fingerprint, you're putting your brace stamp on it or whatever you're, you are, you're putting your little fingerprint on it. I think visual is the way forward. Um, and if you're worried about overtoning, then you can add your clear products in. But with the new clay lightener by L'Oreal, that is a 30 to 50 minute development time. And um, so again, I guess that's a bit visual in a way that you've got that time window where you can go and check if you need a little bit longer. Um, definitely don't leave it on any longer than 50 minutes if you want Lydia's hair to stay on there. <laughs> and, and with your toning product, um, so I've used Majorelle, that's actually a 35 minute development time. My Richesse is 20 minutes. So you can see you've got two completely separate products. Yet because I'm using a visual technique, I don't need to worry about one being slightly more than the other. 
So that is literally it with my demo today. So something like this in my, um, in the salon, I probably book out about 30 minutes of time um, to really concentrate on, you know, bespoking those tones, formulating those tones, really delving into your consultation on what your client's after, um, you know, how her hair fades, what sort of tone she's looking for. But that's something about 30 minutes that I would suggest with your tone in time. So it's, it's, it's not what we're used to, or maybe you guys do this already, but it's not like a quick, quick one at the back wash, right? It's a quick gloss. It's a five to 10 minute service. This is a whole service in itself. And it's really going to kind of put that stamp on your balayage as well. I guess it's important, Grace, to educate your clients about that. This is an extra service that, you know, you need the extra time for. They're going to get a bespoke result from doing it. Definitely. And I think sometimes we worry as well about, you know, we do the, we spend all this time doing this amazing colour work and, you know, it's what the client wants and maybe we run away at the till because we're like, oh, we, we can't charge them or we get a bit nervous about, what, you know, our worth and the work we've put in there. I think it's really important with your consultation is from the start, you set out, you know, this is what your client wants. This is the avenue we're going to take you on. This is the journey, what's involved in it. Um, you know, you are going to need multiple toners in there. It's not as simple as just one glass um, and really educating them about the products because sometimes they think they know better than us. That's very, so that's very true, you know, Grace. With all these amazing tutorials, I feel like it wouldn't surprise me if some of my clients came in and they've tried to do a money piece on themselves. Oh. <laughs> Haven't. fingers out. crossed they haven't if not you'll have a lot of corrections on your hands <laughs> <laughs> we've had um hester missed um the products you were using for toning so maybe you could just refresh us on that grace awesome. so i used two formulas i used a dear light by l'oreal professional and that was eight two one so you're level eight with your mow and your ash reflex so it's a cool and a warm um when i say cool and a warm you're you're Cool tone is obviously your ash. Your mauve tone is also cool, but it's a warmer ash. So it just keeps it a bit more sparklier. It's not so flat. It's not matte. And then your majorelle is just pure reflex shade. So that's just your pure toning, pure neutralization, which is your 0.21 and your 0.12. So again, your 0.21 is your mauve first. So it's going to give it a bit more of a kind of uh, pearlescent hue. Amazing. And um, we were speaking before about how toning helps you to get clients back into the salon more often. Yes. And Margaret has asked, how long would it be until you would need to tone again after doing that service? I would say, so what I'd say is I do my balayage client, whatever that service is, whether it's a sprinkle, a full Monty paint or a half a head of balayage. In four weeks time, I would be recommending four to six weeks time, my clients be coming back for a toner. Within that next four to six weeks time, I'd be recommending my clients come back, whether it's for baby lights, whether it's for a few um, freehand highlights through the top, just to give it some brightness. And then four weeks later, again, I'd be back to the toner, six weeks later, back to the full Monty paint. So what it's doing is essentially balayage, we were saying at the start is like, we were our clients were coming in once twice a year like I know mine were where I wasn't seeing them as often because they're like oh like I'm embracing my natural you know I, it's grown out lovely it's not like liney like a maybe like a classic set of highlights it's completely different regrowth so it's just about not just being clever about getting our clients back but how can we actually push balayage forward and you know keep moving the color wheel on Fantastic, Grace. So we are getting to the end of this session. We've covered a lot of ground, which has been brilliant. Um, but do you want to just maybe give us a little quick um, summary of what you used in the um, the blonde clay powder, the new blonde clay powder from Real Professional Paris as well? focus was the amazing new L'Oreal um, Blonde Studio 7 Levels Clay Lift. It's a really amazing consistency because, of course, it's got that clay-like texture. So it's quite stretchy. So when you apply it on the hair, it's just really seamless and it's really great for creating really nice blends. So I went in and mixed that with 30 volt, did a palm painting technique to create heavy saturation through the ends. And then we really, I feel like really honed in today on the importance of toning and, you know, really making sure that that's something we talk to our clients about to kind of put our fingerprint on that end result. 
which has been fantastic grace thank you so much thank you to everyone who's been tuning in and whether you're watching this um live on facebook or on the hairdressers journal online platform and um, you'll be if, register for free if you are on Facebook for hairdressersjournal.online because both myself and Grace will be getting involved with the speed networking so you'll be able to have a little chat with Grace afterwards as well and if you're super excited by what Grace was doing today and you'd like to find out more about the L'Oreal Professional Paris Blonde Studio range and toners to basically to personalise your client's balayage when you get back to the salon and using Grace, Grace's words is put that, your fingerprint on it which is key isn't it Grace? Um, then do go to l'orealprofessional.co.uk forward slash fresh french dash balayage dash blonde dash studio and you'll be able to find out all about that and get your hands on it in time for going back to the salon i'm guessing you're going to be using that a lot grace once you're back so exciting i'm so excited to get the team involved with it and i think it's just always nice to have a new product to talk about um so yeah very excited Amazing. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, Grace. And I will see you for some speed networking at hairdressersjournal.online in a moment. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.